perfect lover I may not always say the things I should I'm sure sometimes we'll hurt one another Some days bad, some good There will be showers, there will be rain There will be days of tears and pain There will be words I regret Anniversaries I forget But on one thing you can rely I'll love you till I die There will be sun, blue skies There will be laughter, love and sighs There will be nights so sweet and long And warm embraces, right or wrong Till who cares when or how or why I'll love you till I die The days we have for our short span Are swiftly spent and few Yet they could take them all from me Save those I spend with you And when I'm old and turning gray I will remember how I feel today And should it be that the years have flown And you have gone and I'm left alone Your memory will get me by I'll love you till I die Just before Easter, my granddad died of a broken heart, according to his daughter, my mother. According to his son, Ernest, it was pneumonia, but he always thinks he knows everything. According to my dad, it was cirrhosis of the liver, but according to the doctor, it was plain old age. Grandad himself told me he was fed up of hanging about any longer. He'd lost his eyesight, his mates, and granny. The night before the funeral, I stayed with mum and dad. Ernest and June, his wife, came that morning, as did Caroline after she dropped our David off with some friends. It was odd sleeping in Grandad's room. He wasn't there, yet he was. And when I'm old and turning grey, I will remember how I feel today. And should it be that the years have flown, and you are gone and I'm left alone, your memory will get me by. Where's my granddad? He's gone out to the allotment with your dad. Has he just gone or will he be back soon? He's just gone up and he won't be back till lunch, so you've got plenty of time to say hello to your mother. Sorry, Mum. Cup of tea. Yes, please. I met Walter Ham last night. Do you remember old Walter? He was saying they were short on the committee this year, what with Frank Tilsey dying and Arthur Shaw not being well. I thought Grandad should offer his services again. What, the Bowls Committee? Yeah, he should get back on. It'd do him good. We couldn't do that now. He's not well. Besides, your dad'd have to take him every week, and he looks after him enough. Well, perhaps we could do it on a rotor. It'd end up with your dad taking him every week. Your Caroline wouldn't want you doing that every other Friday. She doesn't see enough of you as it is, what with the baby and all. Anyway, are there sudden interest in your granddad? Oh, no reason, really. Well, Frank Tilsey used to be one of his team. In fact, granddad taught him to play, and he's gone, and half the members have left or died or gone. I just thought it was something granddad could do before he goes. Ah, oh, don't say that. Well, he hasn't got long, has he? You know, he used to have his woods gleaming. When I was a lad, I used to think I'd play when I grew up, but my mates never played. Nobody plays now, do they? They have it on television. I'm going up to see him. What about your tea? I'll have it when I get back.
Hello, Dad. I hear that baby of yours isn't sleeping too well. No, he's got colic or something. How's Caroline? Fed up. Tired. Ah, that's what I am too. How do you mean? I'm fed off of digging his allotment for him. Just because he can't do it anymore, he expects me to keep it up for him. Gives him pleasure, Dad. Does it? Well, it gives me backache. It'd be a shame to let it go to waste. He's spent years on this. I'll be glad and I'm shut of it. As soon as he pops his clogs, I'm notifying the council. They can allot it elsewhere. You know, a strip of land like this used to keep whole families for generations. There's hardly anybody here now, is there? No, there's not. They've got more sense. They're all at match. Anyway, it's cheaper to buy bloody vegetables. Did you want to see me about something? No, it doesn't matter. I just thought I'd pop up. After 18 years of failing sight, Edgar Bryant lost the will to fight, and on Tuesday last fell asleep. His loss has shattered everyone. He leaves a daughter and a son, and a loving family to weep. lived a long and fruitful life But had not been well since he lost his wife With whom he's joined once more In peace and glory and eternal happiness Embraced in loving arms and wrapped in his caress Remains to be interred at all saints at ten on Saturday Uncomfortably mourn In shoes and collars For years unworn And a feeling that somehow They're to blame And his daughter's vigil Through the night Has left her weary And contrite And her soul confused With ritual shame In peace and glory And eternal happiness Embraced in loving arms and wrapped in his caress, soundly sleeping at rest in heaven's endless day. Another sinner passed away. You'd have thought there'd have been more here, wouldn't you? Well, he was the choir master. Yes, but that was over 20 years ago. Most of his friends are dead now, anyway. They haven't got a choir anymore. They've hardly got a congregation anymore. This is where I first met Ernest when he was a choir boy. He was awaiting us to get in the choir then. Any big service, you had to come early, otherwise you were down the back. Mm. We came a couple of times before our David was christened. We felt embarrassed. There was no one here. No one knew the tunes. They'd all changed.
The only possible reason for making these things totally unopenable is to hide the fact that the contents are inedible. What a lot of a bubbles, Thomas. Almost poetic. Godsworth Hall in danger of lifting your appreciation of the arts, is it? Oh, I'd love to meet the man who invented this. Cellophane! What was wrong with a paper bag? Paper bags were very unhygienic. I mean, what with flies and such, anything could get in there. Aye. Even the humans. Oh, I knew I should have made some up instead of having to buy them. Ernest? Smile. Oh, it's a... present Lord Chettleton's got a very intelligent face, hasn't he? So graceful. It says here you can hire room for a banquet. I'd rather like to do that, wouldn't you, Ernest? Uh, yes, dear. Oh, I'd love to be invited to dinner. Lots of sophisticated people. The silver service. Venison and sauces. Gotcha. Yeah. Candelabras and, and crystal wine glasses. Ernest? Oh. Ta. Oh, well. They ought to stamp a government health warning on these things. This sandwich can seriously damage your health. Oh, Caroline, do you want a sandwich, love? Get to Tom. Philip and his granddad still in there? Yes. I left them in the long gallery. Tom. Long gallery. Looking at family portraits, you know, little Lord Chettleton on the donkeys at Southport, Lady Edwina pig sticking on the lawn, that sort of thing. And Mrs. Lord Chettleton wrapping butties for the punters, no doubt. They've been in there for over an hour. What on earth are they doing? It's not like going to the gents, Jessica. They're looking at paintings. Don't be coarse, Ernest. It doesn't suit. He always wanted to paint, didn't he? Never could, of course. Could draw, though. Quite well. But paintings to do with the light, you see. It takes a great man to capture it. We've got to be able to say something different with it, to take hours and hours over the minutest detail. Oh, yeah, and who'd do the ironing? It'd be nice to have the time. They make time, Caroline, great men. They take it, you see. Yes, well, take that, Ernest, and go and give it to Tom. There's a love. Oh, I don't. If only there was something Ernest could do other than his times tables. Accountants can be so predictable, can't they? He'll certainly never paint anything. His dad gave him a paint set for his 17th birthday. He spent an hour trying to paint a stuffed whippet and the rest of the morning cleaning his brushes. He said he couldn't relate to the whippet. I think it outstared him. Mm. Grandad said he wanted to paint me when I was courting Philip. In the nude, cheeky beggar. Are they all right, do you think? They've not had one of his turns, has he? No, I left him discussing the pre-Raphaelites with one of the guides. Oh, it was him. Lord Chettleton. Pardon? Tom, can you go and fetch Philip and his granddad? It's nearly lunchtime and we'll be late for the coach. I'll get him. 
accountants' wives can be so predictable, can't they? Shh, Caroline. Did you want me? No, it's all right. Tom June's gone to get them. Wonderful sense of tradition, isn't there? Talk about the pastures of the blessed. They're not daft, are they? How do you mean? Well, they change my surroundings and remove my traditions. Smile. They take away my paper bag and give me a cellophane sweat box, which I'm daft enough to buy off them, in order to maintain their lifestyle so they can remain unchanged. You know, if he won the pools, he'd complain. Socialism. They don't even trust me with a cardboard carton nowadays, let alone a cup. No, it's this stupid bloody... Smile. How the devil they expect me to get that in there? I'll live... <laughs> In peace and glory and eternal happiness Embraced in loving arms and wrapped in his caress Soundly sleeping at rest in heaven's endless day Another sinner passed away It should have been scrapped years ago. Why I agreed to come out in it, I'll never know. Well, Grandad likes it. Does he? Well, Grandad doesn't have to walk up there for several miles to find a garage. It's the only car he's ever had. It means a lot. It means a lot of trouble. Well, I like it. Do you know? And when we eventually find this garage, and the charming gentleman proprietor is delighted to be of service, as is his attentive and trusty mechanic. And we ask for a distributor for a 1957 Austin A50, and he practically pisses himself. Perhaps you'd like to rethink that. Well, I like it. There's no need for that. It's not my fault it's broken down. No, and it's not mine either. But I'm the one who's got to get it fixed. I remember when he bought this car. He wins 300 pounds on the pools, the only money he's ever had in his life, and he goes and buys a second-hand car with it. Granny almost went spare. Oh, but he loved it, didn't he? He used to wax it and wax it. When was the last time you waxed your car, Dad? Never. But mine goes. And when it doesn't go, I change it. I don't keep it for 20 years on the off chance it'll learn the secret of perpetual motion. Uh, come on. We're going to try and find a garage. If there is one in this godforsaken hole. You know, we must have walked all of half a mile, and these shoes are coming apart. It's incredible, isn't it? 18 quid these cost me four months ago, and look at them. You want to wear brogues like Grandad? I do. You know, he still wears the same shoes he wore for our earnest wedding. And that was 15 years ago. And he's lived with us the past nine. As far as I know, the furthest he's walked since then is to the lav and back. I think even my shoes could take that. You want to take them back? Oh, yes. And has Sir been walking in them? Sir has. Well, Sir must expect wear and tear. My dad bought a carpet once for our front room. If he thought me and my sister were going in there, he'd shout, Come out of there! That carpet's not for walking about on. <laughs> I wonder what kind of mindless Burke could do a thing like that. I don't know the world's coming to it. I really don't. When they've taken Come. your teeth out and straightened your nose and fettled your war wounds that took away toes and opened your stomach, though now nothing shows. No wonder the world, as you know, feels changed. 
When the tarmac, the meadows were oft as a lad You chased and you tickled and made yourself bad When they built high-rise squalor on the best days you had No wonder the world as you know it's gone mad When they bulldozed the factory where as a young man Your 45 years of weaving began When they ripped up the cobbles where Bank Street once ran You'd like to feel hopeful but no longer can Out the core, blindly condemning what stood there before. It seduces town planners like drunks round a whore. No wonder you can't find the strength anymore. No thanks, love. I'll manage with this. I shan't have to mark the bottle now either. Hey, Thomas Waldridge, you never had to before. He never used to drink your whiskey, not unless he was offered. Ah, well, he couldn't half knock it back when he was. He kept threatening to buy a bottle to even up. He'd have had to add shares in the distillery. And good job he wasn't cremated. He'd have gone up like a Molotov cock. And... Well, I'm sorry. I don't begrudge at him. He can't drink any more where he's gone. Well, he can't drink mine anyway. Do you think the old bugger left me a bottle in his will? He didn't make a will. Don't swear, not today. He died in Tester, then. Hmm? What's that mean? It means he didn't make a will. Well, that's what you just said. There's no need to use fancy words for it. It's not a fancy word, Tom. It's the correct one. Is it now? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, Ernest, but what it all boils down to is that we get out. No. What it means is that if he had anything, it would go to his children, i.e. Jessica and I. And me. Pardon? Jessica and me. No, no. You take it from me. The law says it goes to me and Jessica. That's what I just said. Well, never mind, Philip. It'll come to you eventually. No. Anyway, he hadn't anything to leave to speak of. You know very well he pitched in with his savings when he came here. He didn't want charity, didn't Dad? He had standards. It doesn't matter, Jessie. Now's not the time for wills and things. Do you know, they were married 50 years. And he always saw to it that Mum never went short. Even during the 30s and the war. Here we are. I'll put them on the table. Just help yourselves. The tea's coming. I've got to nip next door and buy some sugar. You've run out. Do you need a hand, Caroline? No, it's all right, June. Thank you. I think we can manage. Funny that. Do you see that car still there? You sort of expect that to have gone with him, don't you? Well, at least I hoped it would. I'm getting it moved tomorrow, Dad. There's a bloke at work who's interested in it. He does them up. Well, he's going to buy it? Yeah. Well, for money. You can get two or three hundred pounds for one of those. As long as it's in good nick. Can you? There's a chap in our office got a 1954 Ilman Minx. Goes like a dream. If only we'd known before. About the car, I mean. We could have sold it and used the money for a proper funeral. Why? Was that a pretend one? No, I mean one with a choir. One or two musicians. An anthem. And a gun carriage. And Stuart all announcing it on Luke Nor. Don't be like that, Tom. You know what I mean. Yes, I do know what you mean. There are some things I can understand. You mean I'm not sending him off properly. You didn't mean that. I haven't done enough for him. Oh, Tom, why are you doing this? You're deliberately upsetting everybody. Now, that man sat in my chair for nine years. He drank my whiskey, and he had that parked outside my front door. She thinks he had standards. You think you ought to have had a state funeral. And he was always telling me how I ought to stop mourning and give him pleasure. He wasn't even my bloody father. Don't 
start, Tom. He was an old man. I should be watching whose chair you sit in when you're 82, and I can tell you now whose it won't be. Tea up. They've been sugared. Mum. Thanks, love. Thanks. Philip, what's going on? Actually, that car money, he spoke to me about it a couple of days before he died. And he said that he wanted you to have it. Because you've been working on his allotment and missed all those matches, he thought you might like to buy a season ticket for United. Ooh, I bet you feel horrible now. My chair. Be quiet, June. Well. Did he really? Yes, he did. He said he wanted you to have his woods as well. Stupid old... He wanted you to have his piano, Philip, so that your David could learn when he gets older. Ooh. It'll make terrible marks on our new carpet. Good grief. What's the matter? Well, we've just been given a piano to enhance our child's future, and all you can think about is the marks it'll make on the carpet. Well, I'm very sorry, Philip. I'm only making an observation. I'm very grateful and everything. Come on. Let's all have a drink. Would you like a sherry, Mother? Uh, no, I'll have the tea, thank you. Well, what about you, June? Yes, I think I'll have the tea. Right. Don't worry, we'll straighten out in a few days. It's just that someone we thought we didn't need, someone we thought was in the way, just went. And we're not quite sure what else went with him. But soon his photograph will be on top of the piano with Granny, and all will be well. The days we have for our short span are swiftly spent and few. Yet they could take them all from me. Save those I spend with you And when I'm old and turning gray I will remember how I feel today And should it be that the years have flown And you are gone and I'm left alone Your memory will get me by I love you till I die 